50 years ago, an attack in New York City launched a whole new field of study into something that became known as the bystander effect, why some people can see something bad happen right before their eyes but fail to act. Well, half a century later, it's still a rich field of study, and today it's moved beyond the streets and other public places into the online world of social media. Chris Brown explains. In 1964, the stabbing of a 28-year-old woman coming home from work one night in New York City prompted the world to ask why otherwise well-meaning people sometimes let horrible things happen. 38 witnesses to the murder of a New York woman stood by, making no effort to interfere with the crazed killer. Kitty Genovese's death became the textbook example of passive group behavior. Think of helping as a sort of automatic something we'd always do, but, um, but we also know that, that we often don't. We often don't, and others often don't when, when people are in need. We now know that some of the facts about Kitty Genovese's death were misreported, that far fewer people probably heard her screams and that she was killed inside of her building rather than in front of a lot of people. Still, the so-called bystander effect continues to intrigue social scientists. Genovese's death triggered research into group dynamics. In this scenario, one person alone might perceive an alarming situation, such as smoke in a room, whereas in a group, everyone seemed to wait for someone else to be the first to speak up about a possible emergency. More real-life examples. A toddler in China was struck by two vehicles with 18 people watching, no one stepped in. And closer to home, a bizarre game in Vancouver where a homeless man is given $50 so someone can kick him in the crotch. People just stood around and watched. And many of those things may be, may be undermined by passive others not doing anything. We may come to believe that it's not an emergency. Why would everyone else be standing around? We might come to believe that, gee, this must be really hard to solve because all these people aren't doing anything about it. Get them out of the plane! What changes the dynamic? Wright out. says the research suggests it can be a single person who takes charge, such as what happened when this plane crashed in Richmond and passers-by rushed in despite the danger. In a social media age, the bystander effect, it seems, can be magnified for good and bad. In Vancouver's Stanley Cup riot in 2011, what's the first thing most people did? They took out their smartphones and snapped pictures, which this social media expert argues is better than simply doing nothing. You could look at this as people being less passive, because what they're doing, rather than just walking by, they're saying, if I document this, this might help the police. If I document this, it might help bring the right people to justice. Others are critical of social media, saying it substitutes meaningful action by doing something easy. You can make Bermuda the disagrees. Well, the sense that the issue that you're concerned about, that there are all these other people who are also concerned about the same thing, can be tremendously empowering and urge you to actually do something about it. Kitty Genovese's death has been credited with helping spur Good Samaritan laws in many U.S. states, but more so making people think critically about why they don't always do as much to help as we think they should. Chris Brown, CBC News, Vancouver. Now, before you start questioning humanity, take a look at this. This short video is part of a campaign run by a children's charity in Finland. It asks one simple question. What would you do if you saw a frozen child? 11-year-old Johan is an actor. His story? He had his coat stolen and is waiting for a teacher to take him home. One by one, on a frigid winter day in Oslo, bystanders stopped mm. to help generously offering young Johan everything from scarves to gloves to their coats. In fact, just three out of 25 people chose not to do anything. The social experiment was filmed over two days by hidden camera. In just a few weeks, the video has accumulated more than 13 million hits on YouTube. The charity, SOS Children's Village, has already raised enough money to send 25,000 jackets to displaced kids in Syria.